Greetings. <clears throat> Sorry. Everyone, welcome to the Retro Channel. This right here is the IBM 5150 and matching 5151 monitor. Now, this does not belong to me and the reason it is not on at the moment is because it doesn't work. So today we're going to check this out and see what is wrong with it and hopefully get it up and running. Um, I know very little about these machines apart from the obvious stuff. So uh, I'm not going to go into a deep dive on, you know, the history of this machine. Uh, I'm sure you either probably already know most of it or there's, you know, a million YouTube videos out there that can tell you a lot more than I can. So um, let's first open this up and just have a look what's going on inside and uh, see if there's any issues we should take care of before trying to power it on. All right, so let's check out the machine itself and it would appear that it's already had the case screws removed, so it should be pretty straightforward to open. Now, I think because the power switch is here and it's got this sort of cutout, the case should slide forward, I think. How am I going to do that without sliding it off the table? Okay. There we go. All right. Let's have a look at what we got. So, um, obviously floppy disk drives and controllers, our power supply with our fan and a few expansion cards. Now, a little PC speaker. Um, all right, this is what looks like an IDE adapter. Pull this little guy out. Yes. Uh, ISA compact flash adapter. XT IDE universal BIOS. So, well, there's obviously no compact flash connected, so that's not going to do us any good right now. Let's just pull out the rest of these cards just to have a little look at them and we can get a bit of a look at the main board underneath. So there are some screws here. Flatheads. So you know it's old when there's flathead screws. Now, massive things. So yes, the big full length cards. They're huge. So this looks like a RAM expansion. It says six pack plus on the corner, AST. And there's the FCC ID, which the camera is not gonna focus on anyway. Anyway, so maybe 256K RAM. Uh, there's a battery here, so I guess we've got a real time clock. I imagine that's probably flat. Uh, and like a parallel interface there. So we'll put that aside. Next one does not have a screw. Another full length card. All right, this looks like our MDA card, monochrome display adapter. So this is gonna give us video output and there is if the camera will get it, there's a little tiny bug, dead bug in there, maybe a spider or something. Don't know, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, not really much to see here. So I think this is, again, a parallel or printer port. And this would be the, the connector that goes to our monitor. So put that aside. And finally, it looks like we've got our floppy disk controller card. Yes, everything is pretty much on cards. In fact, it's really only the keyboard connector. Oh, there are a couple, going back to this RAM expansion, real-time clock thing, there are a couple of headers here. So maybe like game port or, or serial or something on there as well. Uh, let's just remove our floppy cable. And I think these are keyed. Yes, they are. There's a little key there. And I imagine there's 
little notch in the card itself. Yes, there is just in there. So yeah, uh, 618-1682-XM and IBM 22. Yeah, nothing too interesting to see. And I guess, yeah, a floppy uh, connector on the back too. Cool. Well, that's freed up a bit of room. Let's take a closer look at the board. I don't particularly want to take this drive out, although some of the board is under there, but I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, so looking from the back, we've got our expansion connectors. We've got our 8088. This one is actually made by AMD. And it looks like we've got an Intel 8087 math coprocessor. So yeah, it's pimped out. Um, this is the 64 slash 256 K board. So I think the original boards only had like 16 to 64 K. So over here's all our RAM. Is there, I guess, ROMs and there's an empty socket. Maybe an extra ROM goes in there. Let's get a look at that RAM. Yeah, MT RAM. So I guess banks one, two, and three all have MT RAM and some of them MT parity and an NEC parity. This one looks like Oki RAM and also something with a T on it, but it doesn't appear to be Texas Instruments. Um, and that's bank, bank zero. And then we've got some little tantalums, which I'll want to just quickly check to make sure they're not shorted because they have a habit of expanding Exploding in a little fireball sometimes, especially when the machine hasn't been powered on for a long time. Um, so, um, yeah, MT RAM and some of the legs look a little bit crusty. These are all socketed, thankfully, but the bank zero is not socketed. So I guess, what's that, 256K, and then we've got another 256K on that expansion card. So I think we've got 512 available in total. So what I want to do is just disconnect this power supply and pull it out just to have a look inside. So we'll have to remove our little power connectors. I think they just lift up and get stuck. Oh, I see. So they've got little hooks on the back of the connector and they sort of hook in. So you have to sort of lift them up and then tilt them back and then lift them out. There you go. Uh, and I guess we'll have to disconnect the power for the floppy drives. I think it's just that one and the same on the other. There's not much room there. Come on. Right. Now let's just get this floppy cable out of the way as well. If we can. Okay. Let's get this power supply out. Looks to be held in by four screws at the back. So flathead screws once again. They do have like a, um, a hex head as well. So focus. So you could use a, um, a socket, which is a nice touch. All right, I think this will just lift out. It's moving. Feels to be held in at the bottom. Uh, let's see if I can tilt this up without breaking anything. All right, so there's two sort of things that it must slide into. I think it slides forward and then up. Sort of jiggle it back and forth. Right. I think it's released. Hey. Cool. Um, there's a little idea of 
the pinout there. Again, it looks pretty clean in here. Uh, what I do want to do, actually, while we've still got this and the power supply is not in the way, let's just check, make sure there's no shorts on the main board on any of the voltage rails. Is that going to squeeze in there? Uh, so all of our grounds are all in the middle of the connector. So I'm just going to, actually I might even just swap that out for an alligator clip and clip that on the middle one. So according to the power supply, uh, I think first pin should be power good. So we shouldn't see continuity. Well, we might see some continuity like 36 mega ohms, but we shouldn't see a direct short anywhere. Actually that's shorted. Uh, what is that pin? F okay, that's one of the ground pins. So yes, that should be shorted all together. And then we've got more ground and the next one should be minus five. So it's saying 50K. And then the plus five rails all look to say 575 ohms. So yeah, definitely no shorts on the power rails. And have a look at these tantalums. All right, so the outer legs are common on these three-legged tantalums. So they both appear to be connected to ground. And then the middle legs are connected to five volts. And because they're all on the same rail, obviously nothing is shorted. Otherwise we'd see it on the power connector itself. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get this uh, heaving lump out of the way. Take a closer look at the actual power supply itself. Right, power supply. Uh, while we've still got the Multimeter, let's just check the voltage rails on this. See if we can find any shorts. I'll just swap the probes to something a little bit finer. And we'll just again stick that in one of the ground leads. And I think so. This should be power good. 2.7k, that's fine. That's key. I don't know what key is. Plus 12 volts, 300 and something ohms. Minus 12, 300 ohms. That's a ground. That's a ground. That should be a ground. And then minus 5 says 100 ohms. And then our plus 5, yeah, it looks like it's charging up a capacitor, but yeah, again. 100 ohms. So no shorts across the power rails, but I do still want to open this up and make sure there's not a reefer capacitor that's going to potentially explode and fill the room full of smoke. So it appears that we need to get the screws out, which look to be little Torx bits that have the little um, pin in the middle of them. So I think, I think I've got the right bits in here. Let's see. It's too big. Hopefully this one. Yeah, cool. So there are Torx T10H and you can see it's a little tiny hole in the center. Uh, Right. Yep. Obviously the fan is still connected. Cool. And again, it looks pretty clean. Like there's a tiny bit of dust around the fan, but certainly not something uh, that you'd expect from such an old machine. And the fan itself, the fan itself is soldered 
onto the board down in there so we can't unplug it. I mean, I could unscrew it and pull it out that way, but I don't think we need to. Uh, so we've got a few electrolytics. None of them look to be bulging. These big heat sinks have, I guess, switching transistors or MOSFETs or whatever attached to them. Uh, there's a bridge rectifier. What I'm not seeing though is any reefer capacitors. Hmm. A little coil. No, oh, okay. There is there is an X class capacitor down here. Let's see if I can move some of this. But it is not a reefer, so that is good. And there's a Y capacitor over here, which looks like this ceramic-looking job. So there is a spot here that says CX2 next to the bridge rectifier, which Actually, it looks like the solder holes are still full, so it's possible nothing was ever installed there, but I guess that's where a reefer would go, perhaps. But either it's been removed already or um, there was never one there to begin with. Cool. All right. Well, the power supply looks good. I don't see any charred components or anything, so pretty happy with that. I guess we throw it back together and power this thing on. See what it actually does. See if it lets the smoke out. In fact, I might try and leave the power supply open a little bit when we power it on just so we can see if something does go pop. At least we'll be able to see it on camera hopefully and track it down quickly. <sighs> Plug this in. Like this in the back, powered off. And I'm gonna flick the switch and just stand back, just in case one of these tantalums decides to have a little party. Ah, uh, here we go. All right, the fan is running. It's just slightly off camera there. And there's our beep codes. And so far, nothing has gone up in flames. I'll give it a minute just to make sure, but so far we're looking pretty good. And it beeped, so that's a good sign that things are at least somewhat working. It's interesting that these little disk drives have a little socket with a jumper. And this one's missing an IC. It says T rest, T reset. I don't know. Nothing's caught on fire. I'm going to close the power supply back up and we'll, um, yeah, hook up a monitor and see what it tells us. All right, before I hook up the display, I might just do a quick check of our voltage rails. <laughs> Why will it, while we've got easy access. All right, so I'm going to put this in one of the ground pins. Hopefully it will stay secure. And we'll just see. So yeah, uh, power good. I think this might be the ground or five volts. We're seeing five volts. I think that means power is good. I guess so, because we've got those beeps. So that seems good. The next one, key, uh, is giving us 5 volts as well. This next one should be our 12 volts. 12.1 looks very good. And minus 12. Minus 12.1, that's good. Ground, ground, ground. And minus 5. Minus 4.8, that's fine. And then plus 5. 5.1. Voltage rails look good. Cool. Right. Finally, let's get this display hooked up. Uh, is it going to whinge about disk drives? So I'm just going to put all the cards back in just for now. Ah, uh, okay. Keyboards connected. Now the monitor has. Yeah, two connectors. So this 
IEC actually plugs in to the power supply as well. And then a little cable, which uh, yeah, a little MDA cable actually has three of the pins missing. I think that is normal for the 5151. So we shall plug that in there. And I'm pretty sure this monitor will not power on if it doesn't receive horizontal sync. So we do need to have a, a video signal running to it. Here we go. Okay, same beeps, keyboards connected, monitor is not running, um, the screen's blank, no high voltage, hmm, so possibly an issue with the monitor, possibly an issue with the computer, but we're going to need to work that out before we can Get this show any further. No, controls do nothing. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely not running. Yeah. All right, so I've had a quick look on minus zero degrees, uh, which is a great resource for this kind of stuff. And apparently one long beep and two short beeps. Uh, possible causes are that switch one is uh, configured for an MDA card or possibly a CGA card. So let's check out these switches on the main board and see uh, if they're set up correctly for this particular card. They should be set as an MDA. Uh, so switch block one. Switch block one is the closest to the center of the board. Uh, okay, yeah, so there's there's a switch block over here, which I guess is number two. And this here is switch block one. So let's bring this in. So switch one should be off to indicate we have some floppy drives in there. Is the camera going to focus down there? No, come on, focus down there. Look down there. Oh, almost got it. All right, well, <laughs> switch one is off. So that's correct. Switch two should be off if the 8087 is installed and it is off. Switches three and four uh, relate to the RAM, so they should both be off if banks zero, one, two, and three are populated. So we've got all the RAM banks populated. So at the moment, switch three is on and switch four is off. So I'm going to make that both of them off. Uh, all right, switches five and six are the video card type. So for an MDA card, five and six should be off. And again, at the moment, uh, five is on and six is off. So we'll make them both off. And seven and eight is the floppy drive count. We've got two drives. So seven should be off, eight should be on, which is correct. All right, so hopefully, now that we've changed those switches, we might get through post. I'm not going to worry about hooking up the monitor just yet. We'll simply hook up power and just see if we get the same beep codes or if it changes. No beep codes. I wonder if we're going to get a display this time. Uh, let me move some stuff around. Monitors connected, keyboards connected. Let's see what happens. I'm 
Still not hearing any high voltage. Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, disk drive just accessed. That's a good sign. It's making its way through some kind of boot process, but nothing from our monitor. Right, so as you probably saw, the screen did come on and it actually said Parity Error 2. I didn't realize this until I actually started editing this video. Now, I've already done a whole bunch of other stuff since then, uh, which included uh, probing the actual output of the video card, among other things, and also pulling apart this monitor because I sincerely thought that it was not working. Uh, it is completely silent. The screen does not get staticky or anything. So I totally thought that this monitor was dead. And um, yeah, now I've actually got it pulled apart here. So that was also going to be part of the video, but obviously uh, it's kind of a moot point now. Either way, this thing definitely needs a good clean inside and I'm going to check uh, the components just to make sure nothing looks iffy and uh, obviously reassemble it. And then we'll get back on to the parity error. I'm guessing it is a RAM fault, uh, but I haven't looked that up online. I literally was just editing the video and noticed that the screen did actually come on. So uh, it's very much beer o'clock right now. And um, we're gonna have to leave that until the next video. So a massive thank you to everyone for watching. Uh, I hope you kind of enjoyed it, maybe somewhat. and. Um, Please, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video around if you choose to. And um, I will catch you on the next one. Massive thanks to the people that support me on Patreon. And um, yeah, I'm going to have a well-deserved beer or two after realizing that, well, I'm an idiot. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Oh, and be sure to check out the playlist from Retro Tech Chris, who's um, grabbing all the DOS Ember videos and sticking them all in a playlist. So yeah, big thanks to Chris. Uh, be sure to check out the other channels in that playlist. And um, that's, yeah, that is it. I'm done. <laughs> Bye.